holding the stock rail. We got um, two 10 mils for the OEM fuel line, two 10 mils on the mounting tabs. And then uh, I just use an adjustable wrench to break this fitting free. And then everything will be able to pull out from stock. Okay, so when we are installing the fittings, there's an M14 invert flare that has to go to a 6AN. 6AN uh, 45 on this one, inlet at 45 degree, and then we'll have to remove the the hell is this called the engine hoist yeah. from the <laughs> take that out and it'll be a really close fit with trying to get out from where the manifold has a little block that sticks out but it'll have just enough room and that gives enough clearance for the rail to go in There we go. So, push the rail in, measure the line, bolt it down, and you're good. I think that's everything. All right, so the install's all done. Um, what we're gonna do is push the, um, the fuel rail down as far as you can get uh, to make sure that the O-rings are seated and then tighten these two top bolts. Uh, on this prototype rail, we had to, for the BK2, had to put in a washer on each side due to the difference in height. And then made a, uh, a short line that adapts from the stock feed line to a 6AN, comes in, capped off on the other side. So, there we go. Overall, pretty simple install. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do a boost leak test with the throttle body open to make sure that after installing, you don't have any boost leaks at any of your injectors. There we go. It works. Here's the revised fuel rail. Uh, basically, it's still uh, the ID of it. Ooh, guess I can't get a good view of that. The ID of it is still uh, dash eight, just like my prototype version. However, this one is not going to come drilled to have a uh, pressure gauge on the fuel rail. Normally, uh, if you add a regulator, there will be a port on there to add your own gauge to it and that will be just as effective as having it on the rail. Uh, for the BK1 you also have to remove the uh, like that engine hoist hook whatever uh, and then since I designed this rail for uh, my BK1 this one will fit in without having to use any sort of spacer under these bolts for the manifold. Uh, however, at this point, nobody has installed one of these on a BK2. So as I said earlier in the video, you may need to add a single washer under the bottom. And that has to do with the fact that the injector heights on the BK1 are different from the BK2. They got taller on the BK2s and the 2s also have a plastic uh, manifold and these mounting points likely changed uh, very small amounts based off of the injector heights and different design of the manifold. So um, this is uh, what I'm making. It's gonna be for sale if it isn't already 
by uh, Tim Herber, uh, GenCoopStore.com. So if you want one, go check it out there. As you can see, uh, I'm working on getting them all finished up right now. Uh, I am just an enthusiast like the rest of you. So basically, in order to make these parts, all of these parts, cheap enough, I'm basically doing the final drilling and tapping of all of the holes on all these. Because if you have a machine shop, um, tapping seven holes basically uh, for all the injector mounts plus these three dash eight uh, and they uh, it's a lot of tooling changes so the price goes up a lot and I wanted to be able to offer these uh, with Tim to the entire community at a very reasonable price hopefully this opens up some more options out there because all I want to do is move this platform forwards. One last thing before I forget, um, these may not happen again, so they're going to be in a very limited quantity. This is the only batch that I made for them. Uh, the only way we can get them to an affordable price point is by doing batch orders of them. And if you're doing a single part, something, a billet piece like this, um, with as much material as they are removing, um, and all of these extra features, this is like probably six or seven hundred dollars, if not more, um, just if you were to go out and get a single piece. Uh, this part was optimized for uh, basically like a four or five axis CNC. Um, but yeah, if you're doing something like this on your own, expect a single piece to be very expensive. So unless we have a very high demand for more of these, uh, these likely won't be made again so if you're interested in it be sure to talk to Tim at uh, Gen Coop store and we'll see what we can do we're working on these to get some more of them made if these ones have a uh, high enough demand